All right, it's nine o'clock. We have over 110 participants. I think we're ready to get started. All of our panelists are on and accounted for. I think we're good to go. Principal Weinstein, I think you're up. I'll unmute myself. Welcome, everybody, all 120 of you. Thank you for taking the time out of on your Monday morning. Hope you had a great new year and a holiday. Um, so like I said, thanks for joining us. You're gonna meet, today you're gonna meet the building principals and the academic team who's gonna take you through the steps on how we place kids into appropriate classes into in sixth grade. Um, our goals are to, for today are to provide you with an overview of the middle school experience in general, um, the social emotional changes that occur from five to six and actually five through eight, the academic expectations um, also grades five through eight. And then, like I said, the protocols for how we place kids in, uh, in the ELA, math, science, and world language. I would let the team introduce themselves. Mr. D'Amico could not be here. I am substituting, um, obviously a step up. So from there, um, Ms. Fogel, go ahead. Alrighty, I'm Tara Fogel. I am the science uh, program coordinator here at the Greenwich Public Schools. Who wants to go next? I'm Mike Reed. I am the math program coordinator K-8 for the Greenwich Public Schools. I'm Dr. Benjamin Marcus. I'm the interim program coordinator for ELA and social studies for the Greenwich Public Schools. Hi, I'm Laura Newell. I am the K-12 art and music coordinator for Greenwich Public Schools. Hi, I'm Adrian Hirsch Klein. I'm the ESOL and World Language Coordinator K-12 for Greenwich Public Schools. Welcome. And I'm Carrie Borchding. I am a special ed um, coordinator for the middle schools and also for um, a few of the K-5 to elementary schools. Hi, I'm Bonnie O'Regan. I am the Advanced Learning Program Facilitator for Greenwich. I'm not sure who chose these pictures. Uh, Gordon Beinstein, Principal Western Middle School. Good morning. Hi. Sorry, Karina. Uh, good morning, Tom Healy, Principal Central Middle School. Karina, do you wanna go? Sure. Um, under my picture, it says Bonnie O'Regan. I don't know if you guys see that. It shows me as Bonnie O'Regan, I'm not sure why. I'm Karina McGanna, nice to see everyone. I'm one of the school counselors at Western Middle School. Good morning. Good morning, I'm, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Good morning. I'm Leslie Polange, uh, counselor at Central Middle School. Jason Goldstein, principal of Eastern Middle School. Welcome everyone. Good morning. Good morning, I'm Megan Moore. I'm the, uh, one of the counselors at Eastern Middle School. Welcome. Okay, I am up. Um, so middle school is more than just a link between elementary and high school. It's a time of intense growth for students, not only academically, but personally. Um, physically, they start to show uneven development in skills like agility, balance, strength, and flexibility. But they also get better at fine motor and gross motor movements um, like those used in team sports. Middle school is a time of major social and emotional growth. Kids may struggle to fit in even though they are looking for ways to be individuals. They may not ask for the advice as often as they had before. Um, and intellectually, problem solving skills and thinking skills develop a lot at this age. Kids may also start to pay more attention to decision making, organizing ideas, time, and things. Who's got this slide? Karina, do you want to take it or do you want me to take it? I'll take it. Um, so looking at the slide real quick, we are here to support your child um, during this time of huge growth. And when there's huge growth, um, there's likely to be bumps on the road, right? Because we're learning as we're going. Your children are learning as they're going. So we're part of a team, us middle school counselors. We work very closely with all of the teachers in our middle schools 
We work closely with our elementary feeder schools as well. We work closely with community agencies um, in order to help support your child. So we're part of a team to help support academically, social, emotionally. Um, we're a liaison between um, the whole entire team that's here to support your child. Um, so, so yeah, we're just excited for a new year and to get to know your children. And just as a side note, us middle school, middle school counselors, we get to know your child way before we meet them in person. We get to know them on paper really well because we're going through um, all of their test scores, all of their information that we get from their teacher at their home school. So we gather a lot of information. And then when we finally meet your child in person, we get to put the whole picture together. Um, so yeah, we, we work very closely to get a lot of information and communicate with um, all of the team in our building and in the district and community agencies as well. Good morning. Um, so I just wanted to throw, put this out there that the transition from elementary school to middle school is the biggest transition your child will have in their academic career, vastly because the, the middle school and the elementary school is structured so much differently. Um, and it is different in a variety of ways because students in middle school, and I'm just going to go through the ways that middle school changes uh, from elementary school. They navigate a new schedule and the hallways during passing time. They go from classes to classes. They manage their materials needed for each class and they have a locker. They attend different classes for each subject area with different teachers and different students in them. They learn from different teachers for each class. They take notes in class. They study for weekly tests and quizzes. They learn to manage their time and increase in workload outside of school. So that would include nightly homework and long-term projects. They take responsibility for makeup work after an absence. They will learn to use an electronic grade book with a number of letter, with, an, with numbers and letters for grades, which is new. They will seek extra help out when necessary. So, you know, the teachers offer after help sessions that they will advocate for themselves to attend. They learn how to use a digital Chromebook responsibly. In addition to all these academic demands that are different than elementary school, students are also concerned, and you know, this is the major more area for them with the social transitions, including making new friends and where to sit in the cafeteria. I know this seems daunting, but the middle school works very well with the elementary schools to make this transition as smooth as possible. And then we as middle schools gather them, meet them where they are and help them to develop all of these skills that I just discussed. Thank you. So if you have a student who qualifies for special education services um, coming in from fifth grade, or they may be in the evaluation process or even a student who may become identified into the middle school. Um, each middle school does have a continuum of services and things are individualized. So depending on what your student may need, you may have some push into classroom services or some small group instruction. Um, you may also participate in a co-taught class. Um, there are academic lab periods now built into the schedule. So if you are a student who needs that daily support from a special education teacher to work on your goals and objectives, your services may change at the time of what we call a bridging PPT. And we'll have those in the spring where uh, the elementary schools and the middle schools will have talked about kind of what the student needs and will propose to you a plan going into the middle school. So there are some service times that may change uh, based on the fact that it is a rotating schedule in some buildings and also that it is a, a different blocked schedule than it, than it was in the past. Um, and so all those things, they'll, you'll work with your fifth grade team um, and you'll be able to meet a sixth grade team as well um, who will be inheriting the student. We're going to be talking throughout the rest of the, pres the presentation about the procedures Greenwich, is, Greenwich uses for ensuring 
Each student is appropriately placed and has a schedule that meets his or her social, emotional, and academic needs. But I wanted to share with you on the out front the three dates that are important for you to know. We'll repeat these at the end also so you, do, so you can get a pencil out if you want to. The first one is the parent input window. Parent input is one of the many pieces of information utilized in placing a student into classes. This form will be available via the website and you will also receive an email on January 20th. Please complete this form by February 4th. The second date is for your information only. This is a range of dates when teachers are gathering additional information to be used as part of the body of academic evidence for ensuring each student is appropriately placed. And the last date is when you will be informed of the placement recommendations. Emails will be sent by me on March 31st and on April 1st. All right, so good morning again to everybody. My name is Mike Reed and I am the math coordinator for the district uh, K through eight. Uh, thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, a bunch of my presentation will probably be redundant to those of you that have attended the Board of Ed meetings over the course of the last few months, um, but there is some new information in here as well. Um, you can email me at any time for any reason, um, and I'll help uh, figure out the answers that you need, um, you know, to support your child. So um, here's an example of um, a natural pathway that a student may follow when they get to middle school. If you focus on the column of this graphic on the left side, this is a natural three year progression um, where students um, progress from math six all the way to pre algebra in eighth grade. Um, and there are opportunities to accelerate um, for students over the summer as illustrated by these jumps um, to the middle and to the far right. Um, I'll explain a little bit more about that at the end of my block of slides. Uh, pathway two um, shows an advanced math pathway. Our students entering 6A no longer skip any math content as previous programs would have had them do. Big Ideas created an advanced pathway to compact um, three years of math into two years. So this would put um, your student in algebra by eighth grade. Um, and this really eliminates a long standing concern of skipping sixth grade content. We refer to this in house as a single jump. Um, and there are opportunities again for your child to accelerate over the summer as um, shown here in the middle column and the far right column. And then our third pathway um, is also known as our double jump. Um, our students in grade five math ALP naturally feed into this progression um, with no skipping of content. And um, as you can see, um, again, sorry, we went to the next slide, but there are opportunities to accelerate. Next slide. Um, so it's really important for you to know that during this entire process, we use multiple measures of both ability and work habits to determine if a general education student will make a single or a double jump. Um, we engage in our typical building advisory committee to transition um, our students into middle school. And that involves all stakeholders, uh, students, parents, teachers, administrators. And um, you know, we try to make sure everybody has a voice in this process. And um, it's really important to note that um, the middle schools, inclusive of the counselors and the administrators, monitor placements very closely at the beginning of the year. So um, they you know, are, are watching to see if students are placed appropriately and they make the adjustments as necessary. Um, summer school options for acceleration. So this last slide gives you some information about summer math opportunities. Each of these options are five weeks in length. Uh, we offer three courses to bridge into 6A or 6 Advanced, Pre-Algebra and Algebra. Uh, these courses are truncated in content, so they focus on the most critical areas necessary for moving to the student to the next level. Um, and the student um, is assessed on these skills um, by a, a final at the end of the summer. It's a summer final, and um, we are looking for them to have an 85% or higher to move on to the next course. We also offer um, an Algebra 1 and Geometry course. These are relatively new in the last couple of years. Um, these courses require the student pass the full final. Um, these are technically high school level courses, even though Algebra is seen mostly in Greenwich and middle school. Um, so students are required to pass that full final um, at an 85% or higher. And um, it's important to note 
that um, if the summer school opportunities here and when we um, um, broadcast them to you don't meet your family's scheduling needs, you have an opportunity to sit for a math final, um, regardless of attending summer school or not. Um, and uh, again, you would need an 85% or higher to accelerate to the next course. Um, so again, please reach out to me with any questions whatsoever. Um, no matter how silly or how complicated you think it is, I'll ha either have the answer or I'll find it for you. And um, next up is Mrs. Fogel with information about science. Thank you, Mr. Reed. Again, I'm Tara Fogel. I am the Kate Science Coordinator here. And I'm just gonna talk you through a little bit about our science curriculum, what Science 6 looks like and opportunities for students who are advanced within science. So science in the middle school is indeed a drastic change from how science has been learned with students in our elementary classroom. Middle school science is project-based and spirals through the disciplines of science in four units of instruction. All middle level classes are based on the next generation science standards, which cover three dimensions of learning. These include science and engineering practices, disciplinary core ideas, and cross-cutting concepts. Science in grades six through eight is taught by a certified science teacher. These teachers have backgrounds in biology, physics, chemistry, earth and space science, as well as the engineering and design process. Our middle school science teachers pride themselves on their abilities to meet the needs of learners through the use of student voice, student choice, and multiple opportunities for extension or remediation whenever necessary. There are two options for science placement in grade six. Science six is an excellent starting place for most students. Since middle school is the first time your child will experience 45 minutes of science instruction daily, it is already a large transition from fifth grade. The curriculum for on-level students is rigorous, appropriately paced, and allows for extension and enrichment based on both students' needs and interests. When we look at sixth grade science for advanced students beginning in 22-23, one major change is the pace at which content is covered. Teachers utilize above grade resources and optional enrichment embedded in the advanced units of instruction. Students in advanced science master all of the same sixth grade performance expectation as their on-level counterparts with the addition of more rigorous text in readability, length, and content. They also engage with larger and more complex data sets on the TUVA platform. Along with these content advancements comes the use of assessment criteria on rubrics that assess student abilities above the middle school grade band. In addition, students engage in one intensive unit of instruction, which we refer to as a seminar. This unit is project-based and involves large opportunities for student exploration and choice. As stated earlier, parent input is an important facet in scheduling students for courses in grade six. To help you consider the parent input portion for the science placement process, I want to, to provide some soft guidelines for your consideration. On-level students may not show a specific interest or motivation in science content now. Maybe they're not interested in the natural world or engineering and design processes at this point in their lives. On-level students may engage in age and developmentally appropriate reflection, practice, and work completion and independence. Advanced students may differ in that they may show a curiosity about the natural world. They may be STEM-minded, enjoy engineering and design projects, tools, or toys. Students who meet success in advanced science in grade six are often intrinsically motivated without adult prompting and are able to complete class and homework with a strong level of independence. When students are placed in science for grade six, we utilize a multitude of information in addition to parent input. This body of evidence includes historical performance on district and state assessments and current performance within science lessons in grade five. Students are initially recommended for advanced science if they meet at least two of the following three criteria. Performance of level three to, or above on SBAC ELA in grade four, performance of level three or above on SBAC math in grade four, and then grade five performance science is indicative of success within advanced science for grade six, inclusive of parent input. These pieces of information are considered in conversation during the building advisory committees each spring. If your student is not recommended into advanced science at the beginning or throughout their sixth grade year, there are multiple additional opportunities for advancement should your student show a strengthening aptitude towards the sciences. All three middle schools provide multiple on-ramps for moving into advanced science. This is done using a team approach, which includes input from all stakeholders, including parent input, teacher recommendation, student work review, and a consultation with building administrators and grade level school counselors.
Next, I turn it over to Dr. Marcus to discuss ELA and social studies. Good morning, everyone. My name is Dr. Marcus. I am the K-8 ELA and Social Studies Interim Coordinator. I'm going to be speaking to you today about middle school ELA and Social Studies, ALP English, and ALP Seminar. Next slide, please. At the middle level, we offer four courses. In grades six through eight, we offer on grade level English language arts and social studies that follow the common core learning standards and the Connecticut framework for social studies, including the inquiry work. The units of study in ALP English consist of a parallel course of study to the general education classes. Furthermore, a deeper investigation of the content combined with inquiry allows for a higher level of critical thinking and discourse. With increased complexity, students are expected to engage deeply in both reading and the writing that students produce. Entrance into ALP English is by examination, building recommendation, and parent consent. ALP Seminar is a one semester elective course open to all students, regardless of ALP status, with building administrator approval. The overarching theme for all three grades is what does it mean to be human, with a different emphasis for each grade level. Entry into ALP Seminar is by building recommendation and parent consent. I will now turn it over to Ms. Bonnie O'Regan to discuss the ALP English placement process. In addition to the classroom, district, and state assessments, students who are being considered for ALP English placement take three additional assessments, which are added to that body of academic evidence. There is a COGAT, which is age normed. This assessment uh, evaluates relationships, systems, thinking, and cognitive ability. Students also take an NWEA map. This is a grade level norm. This is grade level normed and assesses both content and concept concepts. The assessment is adaptive, giving students questions at and above grade level. The final assessments are performance tasks. These are district level normed and open-ended responses that dig into application and reasoning. The analysis of these assessments will be discussed with teachers at the building advisory committee meeting, and students who meet the requirements will be offered placement into the middle school of English. Adrian Hirsch Klein will now talk about the world language. Good morning again, everyone. I'm Adrian Hirsch Klein, the ESOL and World Language Coordinator K 12 for Greenwich Public Schools. Thanks for being here with us. So, world language, world language looks a little different at the middle school than at the elementary school level. Um, in fifth grade, our world language teachers visit your child's general education classroom and teaches. Uh, Spanish or French if they're at Julian Curtis for 20 to 30 minutes, three to four days a week. At the middle school level, your child's Spanish or French class is an academic block of about 47 to 50 minutes, just like their other courses um, that you heard about earlier in this presentation. Um, we offer Spanish um, at the accelerated, on-level, and native tracks at all three of our middle schools. The on-level and accelerated courses follow a similar curriculum, which focuses on thematic units like family, food, and school so that students can learn how to communicate about these everyday topics. What's different is that the accelerated world language courses move at a faster pace. Um, and in addition, the Spanish native course um, looks at um, helping students, native Spanish speaking students, continue sophisticating their listening, speaking, reading, and writing skills um, to deepen their understanding of their native language. Students who choose to study French um, at Western and Eastern will be enrolled in the French One Beginning course. So, this is an opportunity for students who have been studying Spanish to switch to French if they so choose. Students who choose to study French at Central are either enrolled in the accelerated French class, which is French 1A, or French 1 Beginning. Um, and this is based on their prior language proficiency in French, um, particularly at Julian Curtis. Julian Curtis is the only elementary school in our district that offers French beginning in kindergarten. Um, next slide, please. Here is a traditional continuum of middle school language courses. So for example, if a student begins an on-level Spanish in sixth grade, um, which is Spanish 1C on that chart, 
they typically graduate to Spanish two in seventh and then Spanish three in eighth grade. If a student begins an accelerated Spanish, which is indicated by Spanish 1A, they can continue along the accelerated track as long as they can maintain a certain grade point average on their unit and project-based assessments. And as long as they have a recommendation for uh, that class or to continue along that track from their world language teacher. Um, in order for a student in a Spanish continuing class or on-level class to be considered for accelerated once they're enrolled in middle school, there is a list of criteria that Spanish teachers do consider that helps inform um, a placement, including performance in class and on their assessments, as well as the completion of some bridge work over the summer that would inform um, a different placement um, that we would consider later in August. So if a student starts at a certain level placement class in sixth grade, it doesn't necessarily mean they would stay in that placement. There are opportunities to move, just like Mike Reed mentioned for math. Um, in terms of the world language placement process, we consider a few factors as we move students from fifth to sixth grade. Uh, the criteria are based on students' performance on a few measures, including um, an interpersonal listening speaking assessment that we give to all fifth graders in March. That's called the APPLE, which stands for the Actful Assessment of Performance Toward Proficiency. That's a speaking and listening test. There's also a one-page reading comprehension and writing assessment that's also given in March, and we do that through Linkit. Um, we also look at the average of your fifth graders quarterly unit assessments, as well as a teacher recommendation from uh, their language teacher who many of our students have had since third grade um, and or since kindergarten if they're in one of our four magnet schools. Um, in mid-March, um, our language teachers will send you a Google form um, to determine your student's language choice uh, for sixth grade world language, whether it be Spanish or French. And then in early June, um, after we've factored in all of the criteria I just mentioned, you will be receiving an email from your child's world language teacher in fifth grade um, with their world language placement. We work with all new students to our district to determine an, an appropriate placement in math and science. Um, if your child was placed in a gifted program in his or her prior district, um, we ask that you submit the relevant documentation to the district ALP office. And please note that participation in another school district's gifted program does not automatically qualify a student for advanced placement courses in our district. Now I will turn it over to Laurel Newell, Laura Newell to talk about middle school art and music. Good morning, everyone. Thanks again for joining us. I have the pleasure of talking about some fun stuff, art and music, and um, something that's so important, go ahead and move to the next slide, please, is maintaining that art instruction in our middle schools. Um, while creating a positive learning environment and keeping students are, in school are two of the extremely important tenets of the arts, the arts are essential because they bring value to us as human beings. They teach us who we are and we are, where we've been. As Leslie mentioned in the opening slides, there's a large emphasis in our district on supporting students socially and emotionally. The arts do this and much more in helping our child frame their identity. Young children are naturally inquisitive and imaginative, and we embrace those skills through creative construction and focusing on learning and innovation that will help ensure that our students are prepared for increasingly complex life and work environments. One major change to our visual art and music programs in the middle school is that they're now elective. In our elementary programs, we had um, art and music classes that take place every single week. Students now have a choice in which elective that they'll take each year. The schools do everything that they can to provide students with their first choice. 
Art and music instruction continue to focus on the four artistic processes through 3D and 2D experiences. In visual arts specifically, one exciting experience is that students can now enter their artwork to be uh, judged in state and national competitions, such as the Scholastic Art Awards and the National Art Educators Association competitions. Um, we're also in the thrust of trying to create a virtual reality experience for our visual arts students. Um, something as exciting as going to the Sistine Chapel to go paint the actual ceiling in the Sistine Chapel. I think um, the advent of technology has really opened up the doors and experiences for our students to do some outstanding work um, through their visual arts instruction and the skills that they build in each class. Another focus of the curriculum, if you go back one more slide, sorry, Tara. Another focus of the curriculum is how we highlight the skills that could be applied to various careers. I think sometimes we often um, forget that the visual arts definitely contribute to some major careers, such as being an architect, a model engineer. The medical illustration field is becoming a very big hit. And as well as being an art therapist, the careers can go on and on, but something not to be overlooked and something that could be started as early as middle school. Next slide, please. Now in music, things get a little bit um, different from elementary. I think one of the major changes to our music program is um, for the instrumental music program, there are no more small pull out group lessons. Um, that is something that was absolutely critical in the early years of um, instrumental instruction, but that now goes away and students get placed into larger um, small group classes that focus on rehearsal skills rather than the individual instrument development of technique. Um, opportunities for um, students to audition, playing a solo and various scales, um, that opens the door in middle school. You get to have that opportunity. You also get some extracurricular activities that are outside of the school day, which include things such as like a pop ensemble, which um, studies some fun music and support the curriculum skills and goals. In general music, um, we now have the option to do application through three potential instruments, either piano, guitar, and now some ukulele. So ukulele has been one of our newest um, additions to our general music program, and some of the schools are starting to um, include that as part of their general music curriculum. Um, Something that I do want to mention back to our instrumental programming is while we lost that small group instruction, we do highly encourage students to get private lessons outside of the school day. And we are so fortunate in Greenwich um, to partner with the Greenwich Alliance to offer um, tuning into music program lessons for students who um, may not financially be in a place to provide private instruction, but we have opportunities that still um, provide that small lesson group, 30 minute private lesson um, through our middle school program. Uh, similar to elementary school, we do have our typical concerts in a typical year, our, our spring concert and our fall concerts. And as I mentioned prior for um, Western regionals, those are not just isolated to instrumental. It's also um, opportunity for our vocalists to go ahead and audition, provide um, or get feedback from professionals that are in our field. So some outstanding opportunities for our music students as well um, open when they get into the middle school program. I'll turn it over to Bonnie, who's going to talk about our placement timeline. This is a reminder. Here is th these are the three dates that we I talked about earlier. The first one is the parent input window. Again, parent input is one of the many important pieces of information that's utilized in placing students into classes. This form is going to be opened on, July, on January 20th, and please complete it by February 4th. The second range of dates is for your information. And it's when teachers are gathering additional information. This is also when those out additional ALP assessments that I talked about earlier are given and the, the building advisory committee meetings are being held. The last date is when you're going to be informed of the placement recommendations. Emails will start to be sent out on March 31st and continue through April 1st. Middle school principals and counselors are receiving these final placement recommendations prior to April break so they can start working on a schedule that meets each student's social, emotional, and academic needs in grade six.
Thank you all guys for an informative presentation. I just want to, in a time Jason, feel free to chime in here as well. Our goal here is to find the most appropriate placement for kids. And I want to, I just want to reiterate, this is not a, if you're in it or not in it in September, that's your, that's your sentence for the next three years. That is not the case. Move kids around all the time. Um, you know, and we don't have an ALP teacher. Every teacher teaches every level. So they'll see kids in classes and get a sense of this kid is performing more like kids in this class or vice versa. We can make those changes at that time. So this is not a life sentence by any means. It's also important to know that where your kid ends up in middle school does not dictate ninth grade placement either. With the exception of math, most kids can also have a chance to accelerate even if they weren't in an accelerated class in eighth grade at the high school level. So again, it's about appropriate placements, not necessarily, you know, every kid needs to be in every advanced class. What is best for your kid at this time? Tommy and Jason, you guys want to chime in here? I think Gordon kind of encapsulated, encapsulated it, you know, really well in the sense that we want to meet each child where they are. We want to help them develop both social emotionally as well as academically. And, and there's constant adjustments along the way. I think for middle school students, the, the growth both academically, cognitively, socially is an exponential growth period of time for them. So there's a huge amount of change that's happening in those middle school years. And, and that's where we need to be flexible and adjust. And I think all too often in, in having these meetings in the past when they were live in person, we would hear questions uh, from fifth grade parents about uh, high school placement already. Uh, and, and don't worry about the high school placement just yet. Those, there are plenty of time to have those conversations, uh, but the decisions that are being made now for sixth grade are really not impacting the high school decisions um, at, at this point in time. Just reiterating what, what Gordon and Jason said, we speak uh, consistently. We, we Each of us have been at the, our respective schools for the last number of years and, and worked with our teachers and our teams to make sure that kids are, are challenged appropriately when they're ready. So um, that is uh, made clear through this presentation and, and it's just a, a journey that we all take together and, and make sure that we're constantly uh, adapting to what our students are showing us, um, you know, month over month, quarter over quarter, year over year. And for content specific questions, we have linked our email addresses here. This slideshow and PowerPoint will go um, onto our school website under the teaching and learning page. We'll be sure to include that information in any district and school wide s'mores over the next few weeks in case you wanted to come back to this information, review it later on. Um, we are available for some questions now and I see they've been populated into that chat for a bit. We have um, scheduled this meeting for just one hour. So any question we are not able to get to from our curriculum team, uh, we will be sure to create a frequently asked questions page and, and post that to the website as well as necessary. Um, so I'm going to have coordinators. I think you all have access to that questions and answer page if you guys just want to tag in here and answer as necessary. Um, I see one that I can answer right now. Um, are there summer bridge programs offered for advanced math placement? Are there similar ones for science? There are not similar uh, bridge programs for science at this time. Nor are there any similar bridge programs for ELA at this time. I can see a question here about um, how we go about placing students for math. Um, so what we're trying to do is limit um, a high stakes, uh, our placement to high stakes testing. So we're taking the students, um, you know, class assessments, both formative and summative. Um, we're taking their link it assessment. Um, and then we also have um, other questions that we, we use uh, to try to determine if a kid's ready to double jump into um, pre-algebra six. So um, the process is not um, limited to or contingent upon any one data point. We're trying to get multiple, meaning four, five, six data points, discussions with you um, and the teachers in the buildings to figure out what's the most appropriate placement. And then to reiterate what the um, principals have stated so eloquently at the end of the presentation, um, where you end up on the first day um, could change very easily de depending on how you're adjusting to middle school. Um, and if you have any further questions or like more detail, uh, feel free to email me. I'll take the one about the, that someone asked about the actual testing calendar. The testing um, calendars are specific to the buildings and will be communicated from the building level or from my office as far as the specific dates of 
the ELP assessments. I think that that's what you were referring to. Any other assessments are being, will be, um, you find out about that from your classroom teacher. And I'm going to take the one about parent input being most helpful or relevant. We have created a detailed Google form that will be sent out um, and it goes through each content area and it asks questions as to whether or not you'd like to provide input or whether you'd like to lean on the district professionals at Greenwich Public Schools to start with a placement process. Um, and we offer you guys some, some detailed questions for each content area. So that's the avenue we will use to collect parent input. I'm going to take the one about um, whether or not children can do both orchestra and guitar. Um, that's typically based on the child's schedule. So there can be variances depending on what levels they're in. Um, even by school, it would um, actually vary. But um, obviously, if for some reason that you can't get both, there are outside of the school day opportunities. So for example, if they're in orchestra and they were interested still in guitar, there's um, some opportunities even through Greenwich Alliance to take guitar classes outside of the school day or vice versa. Sometimes we offer orchestra, um, small group uh, pops orchestra or small ensembles outside of the school day. Um, so there's typically um, a way to get both, but it would vary by school and vary by your child's schedule to see what other classes that they're in. Um, I'll take the one about native Spanish versus French or Chinese. Um, at the middle school level, we only offer Spanish and French. We do not offer Chinese. Um, Chinese is offered at the high school. Um, if your child is recommended for native Spanish at the middle school level, there's only room in the schedule to take one language. So you'd have to choose um, between Spanish or French. Um, and then once they move from eight to nine, if um, they'd like to study something beyond Spanish or French, they have a choice of German, Italian, Latin, American Sign Language, or Mandarin Chinese. Um, do, do one of the principals want to take the question about physical education? Is there any info around physical ed? I can take that one. Um, so in, in okay. middle school, uh, physical education is pretty much an every other day class. Uh, it really depends upon um, each building's master schedule. But uh, in essence, kids are getting a full period of physical education about every other day. Um, in addition to physical education, we also have uh, health classes in middle school. Um, these are separate uh, courses, lessons that students take. It's approximately a, a marking period long or 22 lessons. Um, those are typically delivered in uh, sixth grade and eighth grade. Um, and all of that information, uh, again, what is covered um, can be found online um, on the district website. Uh, but also uh, there are letters that go home at the beginning of the year uh, that inform parents about what topics are covered in health, um, which of those topics um, are available for potential opt-out uh, uh, family choice uh, for that. Um, and all that information goes home at the beginning of the, of the school year. So students will have a full physical education for the for uh, the bulk of the school year uh, almost every other day and then um, uh, about a quarter or a marking period's worth of health education in sixth grade and eighth grade. And I see one more question about um, the ALP newsletter was distributed last October. Do students need to place into ALP English in order to be eligible for Science 6A? No, student placement into another ALP class is not indicative of placement into advanced science. Um, I can take a question. Um, Arafi typed in, how often and when do students meet with counselors to review courses slash workload? So what typically happens um, here is we, at the end of the school year, around May or June, we send home hard copies in snail mails, traditional mail, um, every student's course recommendation. So you'll see academic classes, which they're placed according to the criteria that you just heard. Um, you, you will get at home as parents, the list of classes that they will take or that they've been recommended for, I should say. And also when it comes to electives, you will see on that letter, um, whether your child is signed up for band, orchestra, or chorus, because these are year-long classes. Um, any additional elective, such as art, music, consumer science, technology, 
Um, I hope I'm not missing any. Those are typically filtered in randomly through Aspen. However, if a parent or a student reaches out and says, I love art, I'm, I'm a great artist, or my child's very interested in art, we'll make sure to see if we can fit art in the student's schedule. Um, schedules are complicated sometimes, depending on um, whether they the student is in special education, for example, or they need an intervention class. Um, but we do try to accommodate as much as we can. Now, when do we meet with the students? We can meet with them upon request, whether the student themselves send us an email, parents send us emails, teachers will let us know as well. We have weekly meetings with teachers to go over students and any concerns or questions that might pop up. Um, but just generally, that's how we get the information out to parents so you and your child can review the courses, get back to us with any questions, and we can set up meetings individually as needed. Um, I see a question about uh, the percent of children that move up in math, science, and language arts over the course of middle school. Uh, so just quickly to uh, answer that, there really is no percentage. Um, I think uh, what we're trying to impart here is that, um, you know, this is all dependent on, on each individual student and their readiness and what they're showing us in their time in middle school. Um, there's no percentage uh, that we're trying to fill or number that we're trying to hit. So each year, uh, each course, uh, it, it varies in terms of what students show us uh, who may move up based on the evidence that we have as a building team. Uh, and then additionally, as um, Mr. Reed pointed out, there are summer bridge options that students take. So students may actually move up based on summer placements as well. Um, that's a family decision. So we have no idea how many students will be taking summer courses. So we adapt our master schedule and then um, individual student schedules based on um, what the students are showing us and making sure that they're in the right courses. So um, it really varies uh, year to year, school to school as to um, how many students move up in each of the different content areas. And just to add briefly onto what Tom was just saying, the, the overarching goal here is to make sure that the students have the development of the skills they need to move on and, and, and develop and be ready for high school, as opposed to necessarily trying to get them into an advanced course or not, it's making sure they have the right skills. So it's really about assessing where kids are at and making adjustments accordingly to challenge them appropriately, rather than necessarily trying to reach a percentage of moving kids up or down, et cetera. Let me hit the one I on- uh, Oh, go ahead, Gordon. All right, will it be an opportunity for the kids to um, tour the buildings? So we do a whole transition um, starting in early April. So we'll each, each Jason, Tom and I, we each hold a parent meeting um in early april and kind of go through all this again but in more detail especially electives and schedules because our schedules have our own unique um, characteristics to it and then in the past we've had june tours with the uh, incoming students again that's going to be covid related or covid it's going to drive whether they can do that or not but that would be our goal to have kids tour the buildings um in june at some point go ahead leslie sorry you took my answer my question <laughs> I will talk about the um, assessments for, in addition to students can take the math finals at the end of the summer school course, but then I also offer um, a date in mid-July and then at the end of August for the students to come in. Those need to be completed in time for the counselors to have so that the students walk in that first day with the proper schedule. So I will be scheduling those accordingly. And then I see two more questions here about the math. Uh, when we receive more information about Summer Bridge math, uh, program for math, you'll receive that in the spring, um, probably around April or so. And then another question here, can you please clarify around math summer school, students have the option to just test in, uh, in order to level up. As Bonnie just said, we're gonna offer three opportunities for that one in July, one at the end of summer school, and then one a little bit further into August. Again, not too close to the start of the school year because we need to get our students' schedule set up and it puts a lot of pressure on the guidance counselors if we do that too late. Um, but yes, um, we are no longer requiring a prerequisite for a student to move up to the next level. If you can show that you have the 
um, the content mastered at an 85% level or better, then we feel confident that we can um, move you to the next level and obviously always keep a watchful eye to see if that's appropriate. So um, that is a change from the past. Um, some of you that might have had older students that are watching this um, may have been told you needed to have one prerequisite or another, um, but we're trying to reduce all barriers to uh, entry into these advanced classes. I see there's a question about, um, is there any link where we can check specific content to be evaluated or required for different placement on each course? Science six versus six A or ELA versus ELA advanced. I can speak to the ELA side of things. Um, there is not a specific course of study that you can check to see what's going to be evaluated. The different tests that the students are going to take will help determine their level of analysis, their level of reading, their comprehension, whether or not they're operating at a higher level. And that will determine uh, based upon the rest of the body of evidence, whether or not they would gain entry into um, Alp English. Um, Ms. Fogel, can you speak to the science side of things? I can. Outside of the SBA for math and ELA in grade four is our first indicators of student performance in math and reading to support science advanced 6A. Uh, we do use a rubric using the eight science and engineering practices that are attached to the NGSS. So a good looking point for parents would be looking at those eight practices on the NGSS website. I'll be sure to link those under our school website as well. Let me address the question on the electives and how they, um, how do they get assigned and how many are there. Um, the only electives your child really chooses are the language choice and the music choice. And then that we call them electives, but that's kind of a misnomer because we elect, um, depending on how it fits in the schedule. How many they get is dependent upon what other services they might need. Generally, two, two sections a day are electives out of seven or eight, depending on the school they go to. But if your child's in special education services or ELL or in a reading support class, it might be fewer. Typical class size is 20, 21 in the middle school. We do not have a typing class. I'm just going down a list, sorry. We do not have typing at the middle school. Uh, Mike, I think there's one more for you. So uh, in order to take the math test in the summer, whom should we contact in order to take the test? So you'll be reaching out to Bonnie O'Regan to schedule that. Um, um, and we'll give you again, more information about that procedure in April. Um, are there any differences among the three tests in July, the end of summer school and the end of August? No, they will all be the same. But again, to reiterate, it's important to note that the bridge courses are truncated. We focus on priority standards. So those assessments are sort of like summer final assessments. The algebra one and geometry courses, those would be full finals that students would take. Um, so um, definitely more intense. And the question about um, science advanced six being determined by grade four, we do see strong correlation in the grade five NGSS performance based on historical SBA data in their grade five NGSS performance. And since the grade five NGSS scores don't come up until after students have already been placed, we use those SBA scores as primary indicators, but they're only pieces of a stronger body of evidence that is inclusive of teacher recommendation based on current fifth grade performance using our Grunted Public Schools performance tasks written into the grade five foundational lessons. Uh, I, can answer, Leslie. I can answer the question about um, the communication process between parents and teachers, counselors. Um, so we as counselors are your point people um, over the entire course of middle school. We loop with your children starting in sixth grade, stay with them till we send them off to high school. Um, so we as counselors are really your uh, go-to people for any questions um, and vice versa. If there are any concerns that we are seeing in school, um, we will reach out to you as the parent. Um, I think Karina had mentioned, we meet with our team of teachers uh, daily or every other day. Um, so, you know, if you needed an update or wanted to check in, you would reach out to us, we would reach out to the teachers and then get back to you. Um, we are available via email, phone, um, 
virtual meetings, whatever's available at the time. Um, but we are, you know, in constant communication with the team and with you and with your students. Um, and on another side, um, our Aspen Gradebook is live. So you have access to that to see how a student is doing literally from hour to hour. Um, you can set thresholds and, and more about the platforms will come once your child is registered in their middle school. Um, but there is constant communication, um, although it's not as in person as it probably was in elementary school, um, we are always available. Just Can quickly just on, add, um, oh, oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, Tom. Just to add real quick, piggyback on what Leslie just said. I know in elementary school, um, there are days that are blocked off for parent-teacher conferences. We don't have that in middle school. Um, so what we do if you, so first of all, you have, you have open lines of communication with your child's teachers. You can always send them emails. Always, you could always ask us the counselors if you're having trouble communicating or getting in touch with someone. Um, the teachers, if they see an issue or they feel like there needs to be a parent conference, they'll let us know and we'll set that up. If the parents feel like they need to meet with the team of teachers, us counselors, we help we help set that up as well. Um, but I just wanted to point that out because that is a difference. We don't have a schedule scheduled days for parent teacher conferences. Uh, just quickly about extracurricular activities. All of the uh, each of the schools on their school websites have um, information on student life. Um, in athletics, where you can get information on sports, uh, but in essence, we have both competitive sports in each of the three seasons. We have intramural sports, which are just drop in. You can just show up whenever you want. It's a little different than elementary school afters. Um, and then we also offer clubs um, either before or after school, uh, but those are school dependent as well. So we will share that information with the respective parent population of our incoming students when we have our school specific meetings. Uh, but in the meantime, you can see what we're offering now just by going to our school websites. A couple more math two. questions here. Um, uh, the first one is just about math placement with students who may be um, advancing at a faster rate than our double jump. Um, you can certainly reach out to us, our, our ALP um, email, our advanced learning email, or you can uh, reach out to Bonnie O'Regan directly, um, and we take those on a case-by-case -case basis. And then um, can a student sit for the summer math test multiple times? No, they cannot. You will pick your time, and uh, you will take that test. As far as the sports teams go, um, it depends on the sport, whether we have like, we have A and B teams for basketball. Um, we have A and B teams for boys soccer. Um, other than that, there's just one team, um, just because of the number of coaches and uniforms and field space. Um, track and field is a non-cut sport. We can take any and all. And, you know, I know that some of our schools have over hundred kids in track and field, um, but it, they're, it's, they do have to try out to make some of these other teams for sure. And to clarify, um, the assessment window for grade five, when we talk about that assessment window, that's the compilation of teacher input that they're going to utilize to bring to those building advisory committee meetings. We do wanna explain that there are no single test assessments that are going to place a student into any of these courses. We are looking at an entire body of evidence. We do consider parent feedback and a question about how much weight does the grade five teacher recommendation have versus parent recommendation and test scores. We look at all three of them equally as we go into those building advisory committee meetings and we ensure that we place your student in the most appropriate placement for them um, academically and then developmentally with socially and, and, and emotionally as well. Um, so the other place you may have seen that assessment window may have been um, in regards to our general assessment calendar and that window is just looking at quarters. Um, so our assessment window will be February 22nd through March 24th. I just wanted to summarize. I feel like this is a lot of information and, and very overwhelming. Um, and, you know, as the three of us, as the school counselors, we see the kids in sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade in that longevity of the growth that they have. Um, and it is amazing, um, you know, that they grow up so much. They come in as elementary students, you know, from that mentality, and they leave here ready for high school. Um, and, you know, I, the, the points that I made about the differences between elementary school and middle school and all those vast differences 
you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed by all these courses and things like that now, that's how your kids are coming in. They're very overwhelmed with everything. So I just wanna go back to that, the comment on the last slide where it, where it really truly please, you know, we, we, we all are uh, veteran counselors here and we see this time and time again. It's really often wise when you're thinking about where to place them and what the feedback is from the elementary school teachers to focus on making sure that they have that successful transition and not get so overwhelmed and then look to that advancing and that accelerating. It's an amazing thing when a kid comes into my office and they say, Mrs. Moore, you know, I really want to, um, challenge myself more, um, you know, what can I do and how can I do that versus, you know, they're in tears and feeling very overwhelmed um, and, and really trying to manage all of it. Um, so just to keep all of that, the social emotional part, the academic challenge, all of those things appropriate for your kid. And, and one piece of advice that I would give you is to stay in your lane. Um, you know, that advice has been given to me about my own children too, that everybody does things differently for their child and every child is different. So thinking about it and staying in your lane instead of, you know, what noise you're hearing out there. Um, so, you know, I, I don't mean to summarize and we may have some more other questions and I'll turn it back over to the, um, to the admin here. Um, but, you know, I just wanted to sort of put that, those thoughts in your head as well. Thank you, Ms. Moore. I think we will end it for today. This is the hour we have allotted um, for parents who were not able to make it. We do have a second presentation this evening. If you do have lingering questions, we do offer our emails and this will be posted as early as tomorrow afternoon once the videos have been rendered from both sessions in case other questions are asked at a later session. So we'd like to thank the nearly 200 parents who showed up as well as our school counselors and our school administrators on behalf of the entire academic team. Thank you and have a wonderful rest of your day and happy new year.